right, you guys, we're back with Behind the Bikini, and we are on episode number 56. Yay! We are in season two, year two, um, rolling right into Olympia coming up pretty soon, but we've got more than that uh, to talk about before. Like, comment, subscribe. This this podcast might be a little bit wonky because we're both very, very close to show right now, um, but I find myself kind of stuttering on my thoughts sometimes. Um But we are going to talk about coaching green flags today because I think a lot of people always kind of focus on the negative aspects of coaches and things coaches do wrong and things you should be paying attention to and not have. We're going to talk about some things that you should, that would be good for you. But before we get into all that, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, wherever the buttons are on your your devices. And you are three days out? Yes. (laughs) So we all knew that here. Those of you that listened to Behind the Bikini, we knew that this was her show she was going into. So um, are you excited? What are you feeling? Like, how are you feeling going into this into this weekend for Sasquatch? I'm definitely excited. I really don't think that it has settled in yet because I travel so much and every weekend yeah. to shows, I just feel like I'm going to a show on Saturday, you know, for yeah. clients. And I don't think that it really has hit me yet that I'm going to be stepping on stage on Saturday, which honestly, I think that's a perfect headspace for me right now. You know, we're just show up and have fun. And, um, obviously I'm, I'm really, really happy with, um, the physique and the improvements and, um, just checked in with Jamie and we're getting a little bit more food today. So we're definitely starting to peak right now. Um, so yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm excited, but I also feel like I, I'm not there yet. Like, I yeah. don't feel like it's happening. It's been almost a year since I've been on stage. The last time I was on stage was at the Olympia last year. So it's crazy yeah. that it's my time. It's my turn. Yeah, that's awesome. So, and that, you know, going into this show, it's a big lineup. But, you know, when you look at the lineup, too, this is something people need to pay attention to when you're looking at the lineup is that half of those girls that are on there are masters, too. Because they have, you know, masters over 40, over 50. I think they have, I think they have over 60. Uh, no, but I know, I think there is three masters. There's three. Category. Yeah. I think it's, it might be 40, 50, 50 and 55. I think so. I think so, so. <clears throat> but anyway, so those are things to be looking at. You know what I mean? Like sometimes people look at this, at the list and be like, oh my God, it's so huge. It's like, yeah, well half of them are masters. It's a normal, it's a normal pro show. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a, but it is a big list and yeah. you know, it last year it was a really, really big show as well. But again, mm-hmm. it, it went when a promoter has multiple masters classes, those girls are going to hop, you know, hop into the open too. So, but there is good competition there, you know, so it's, yeah. it is, it's going to be a, a, a really fun show. Um, I'm super excited. I have always wanted to do this show. It's a beautiful production. It's got yeah. like the beautiful pink stage lights. It's a pretty mm-hmm. cool trophy. Yeah. Um, so I'm, yeah. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And this is my, this is one of my f- first times minus Tahoe really competing on this coast. You know, usually yeah. I do most, goes on the east coast so it'll be cool to kind of you know get my feet wet over here as well and that was the next thing i was going to say too is that there's not a lot of shows over in the west coast like that you know what no. i mean so when they do do them they're, they're pretty cool like tahoe is pretty cool you know this one's pretty cool i know they do the emerald cup which is all masters pros but they do a really cool setup for that so i think because they don't have a lot of shows it's like they kind of go all out for it you know so yeah the production um, here is just different you know yeah. um with with uh, not every promoter what with, with you know chris mines is the one that does um tahoe and then mm-hmm. next week is like a mini olympia you know it has a great expo and there's yeah. you know, sumo fighting and um ninja warrior like there's all kinds of stuff going on over there so it's just a larger production a larger scale um which is which is cool because it brings out really good athletes you know the, yeah. the shows are competitive so you know if you're really looking to get on stage to really get that good feedback it's going to bring out a good amount of judges too so like this weekend we have both sandy and becky which is awesome um and then the following weekend at legions it's going to be more of like you know bill um i believe uh steve devore is there okay Maybe steve weinberger i think okay. so just a, a different panel right so just different eyes different panels yeah. and that's you know, that's the name of the game in the pro league is you got to get in front of all different eyes and get a bunch of feedback, especially right before the Olympia so that you can know how to bring it into the entire panel. Yeah, absolutely. So wait, are you doing legions too? I am. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. I didn't know that you were doing that. It makes sense. makes sense to do that. Yeah. Okay. The the intention was to do Sasquatch legions. Um, and then obviously a weekend off before the Olympia. So, and see what happens from there. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, not to hype you up or anything, but you're kind of the favorite going into this show. So, you know, the fact that you're that you're thinking 
you know, you don't feel like you're going into a show is like you said, probably a good mental headspace to be in right now. You know, that's people don't understand that can, that can bring a lot of pressure sometimes and un, unneeded, unneeded pressure, because at the end of the day, you know, you're going into these shows so that you can be your best for the Olympia. That's, that's the goal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The ultimate goal is obviously the Olympia, you know, and I have my own personal goals for that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, obviously if I can get an early win, you know, this year for next year, that will of course set me up for success again. Um, obviously I can always use an improvement season, but something I really need to get done is I need to get my implant fix that I've been wow. dealing with for the last couple of years. Yeah. So this is based on how early I can get a qualification and have eight to 10 weeks of an off period, you know? So yeah. ultimately what I'm really hoping is that I can, so that I can do what needs to be done for my health and getting this fixed. Yeah. Um, that, that's my, not the only reason, but that's like my main driver. These next two shows is like, that's what I really, really need and want. And then of course the feedback for the Olympia. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm super, good. super, super excited. So good. I well, I'm a week. Uh, good. You know, um, I'm one week behind you and I'm kind of the same boat that you are. You know what I mean? Like I haven't been on stage since November. So it's kind of the same thing. It's been, been off stage for a year. So, and I'm kind of feeling the same way you are. Like, I don't feel like I'm a week and a half out from a show. It's not what I feel like right now. Like it's normally, I don't know. Normally when I go into competition season, I'm like prepping all my tanning stuff, all my clothing, all my jewelry, all my suits. I'm not doing any of that this year. I don't know what it is. It's just, I'm just kind of, they, day to day to day to day to day it just is what it is like I mentioned that to Dan yesterday I was like I don't feel like I'm a week and a half out from a show right now like I don't feel like that I don't feel like that you know like, like that hustle and bustle yeah. and stress to get everything yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's different and I and I said I think one of the big reasons why for me right now is because I'm moving over into the master's divisions so I don't know what to expect you know what I mean like I don't know what I'm gonna look like next to people we don't really, we don't really analyze masters pro shows and things like that. So like, I don't, I just don't know. Everything is so like, I feel like I look my best, you know, oh, but you do look your best. <laughs> but but sure. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's going to be good for the master stage or not. I have no clue. Right. So I'm kind of in that place of why worry about it? Because there's, there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to bring my best. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, then we reevaluate, you know? So, um, I don't know, like, um, you know, I did get my period last week, but it was only really, really light spotting for like three days. I didn't even wear a tampon. Like that's how, that's how light it was. Mm -hmm. So, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm like, at least my cycle's still here. It didn't completely disappear. My hormones are still okay, but that's clearly a sign that I'm very lean. <laughs> you know, it's clearly a sign. So, um, as soon as that ended, the I was, I was, I had like the fatigue and all that kind of stuff, and that's pretty much gone. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm good now. Like, I feel like. Good. I'm like, I just feel good. You know, I feel normal. And yeah, this week has been 70 minutes of cardio. So I'm not happy about that, but it's really not been hard. You know what I mean? It's just more time than more than anything else. Um, and really two days ago, my weight started dropping. And so now over the last three days, I've dropped two pounds in the last three days, um, which puts me at two pounds over what I was in Japan. So okay. that's about right. I was you know, gonna say, I mean, your glutes look, yeah, you definitely, definitely yeah. added tissue. So that's yeah. about right where you should be. I've never like, and I, I started, I started recording myself in different lighting. Um, my ring light makes me look flat. Um, the outdoor lighting isn't the best in the world, but I can see more lines and things like that when I'm outdoor lighting. And then when I, when I record myself at the gym, it's clear. That's like the anabolic lighting in the gym where it makes you look your best, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> But, you know, just watching myself in the different lighting, I can see the shape of my backside is completely different from what it was last year. And I'm like, and I haven't seen that until really the last couple of days. The last couple of days, I'm like, oh my God, like I didn't even know that was underneath there. You know what I mean? So I'm actually very, very excited. Like I didn't think I had glutes like that. I didn't think I had tie-ins like that. I'm like, oh damn, they actually exist. <laughs> so They're there. They're I'm there. Like, Oh, I actually built something back there, you know, so it's been exciting the last couple of weeks, you know, it's been, it's been cool to see that happen. And I think that in the past, I never really gave myself a full amount of time to see all of that either. You know what I mean? Like, 
I mentioned this last year. I felt like when I was in Japan, I was just starting to hit my stride, you know, and I feel like I'm at the point right now that I was when I was in Japan. So like, I feel like I'm a week ahead of what I was even on stage last, last year, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Already starting your first show out improved from what your best right. was and what you ended last season. Right. Yeah. So I feel good about that. I feel like my posing is the best it's ever been. Um, I randomly hit, and I showed you, I've showed Jamie and I've showed a couple other people. I randomly hit a new transition pose and I was like, Oh, I really like that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Like, cause that one pose, I hated it. I hated it in my routine, but I couldn't figure out how to do something different. And when we went out to Kevin Hart on, on Friday or yeah, Friday, Dan was taking pictures for me outside and I was like, oh, I actually look really good in that position. I wonder if I could work that into my routine. So I was like, so I just started playing with it. I was like, oh, this actually looks really good. I was like, I like this. It smooths out my whole work transition. It's a better look on my frame, all that kind of stuff. And I showed you the text, but I sent it to Jamie and I knew she was going to hate it. When I first sent it to her, I knew she was going to hate it. I'm like, but hear me out. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this is why we're doing it. And like I said, I showed her side by side. She's like, oh, well, now that you show me the side by side, yeah, I do like it better. I was like, see, I told you. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I'm excited about that too. It's just like, I don't know. I just feel like everything's kind of just gelling the last week. It's just Good. coming together, you know? Good. So. That's a good place to be, you know, and and mentally for you too, you know, knowing that you're better than you were last time. You know that you brought your best. I mean, you definitely have grown. Your posing looks awesome as always. So, but yeah, it's always going to, you know, it's only going to be a matter of time. And just like you said, like, you're not sure where you're going to stack up, but yeah. you don't know until you're up there. You know, you got to get up there to find out and you have to know that you've just done everything you can to be your best when you're up yeah. there. And that's what you have to rely on at the end of the day. There's nothing more you yeah. could have done. Exactly. And that's, and that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. So hopefully, hopefully it's enough, you know, because again, you know, going back to the same scenario as you, I'm like the ideal situation for me would be that I could win a, win a show and qualify for the master's Olympia. And then I would have a whole year off till the master's Olympia. That would be the ideal scenario. Now it's not going to happen. I have no clue. I have no clue if that's going to happen. So, Oh, one other thing that I was really happy about too this week is because Jamie is going to be at Legion's. So she's not going to be in Daytona. Greg is coming to Daytona yes. because she's got three of us in that show. So we got that, that message this week. I was like, Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I was like, I have a coach in person. Oh my yeah. God. For the first time. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, no. And I mean, Greg is uh, honestly like just as good as Jamie, you know, Absolutely. he's so on it and the lights and, you know, there's just yeah. something about having, someone else there from Fit Body right. Fusion, you know, whether it's your coach or not as a representation, just so that you can make sure that someone has an eye on you. Yep. Um, you know, we all see this too with our clients. Like sometimes in person you look 15% worse. Sometimes you look 15% better. So someone that can call back to Jamie and be like, Hey, she needs this or Hey, I yeah. think she looks great like this. You know, that really helps us as an athlete just kind of stay focused and stay in our lane 100%. and not take over our own coaching because our coach isn't there, you know, or, or thinking things or that perhaps even is not even there because we're in yes. that prep vision. So that is huge for stress. Huge. Yeah. I was like, I, when I got that message, I was like, Oh my God, because the other part of that too is okay. So ideal scenario. Um, if I qualify in one of these two shows then I don't necessarily have to do hurricane because the whole point of me doing hurricane was because Jamie was going to be there. That's the whole reason I was going to do it. So, I mean, I'd still love to, and I still might, but in the back of my head, I'm like, well, if I qualify at one of these first two shows that I don't necessarily have, my body is like, no, we're done, or I just don't want to do it. I don't have to, you know? So I'm excited about that aspect too, because, you know, the thing that, the thing about the Tim Gardner shows too, is that he puts masters on one day and open on the other. So then I have to make the decision of, am I going to just do masters or am I going to do masters and open? And open. if I do that, then I have to get on stage two days. Correct. So I'm like, that's, that's always in the back of my mind with, with his shows and stuff like that too. So, um, so that honestly, just the simple fact of knowing Greg's going to be there for Daytona, I'm like, praise Jesus. It takes so much stress off for even future decisions, you know, because I can make yeah. what, the decision that's best for me and my body, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So. And that's really what, what it, you know, 
comes down to at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, and that those last final days and hours can make or break the physique. And most of the time that just has to do with stress, you know, so, <laughs> and I, I love that. I'm so happy that someone's going to be there because I know you're there. Um, there's a few of our yeah. athletes that are going to be there. So I was hoping yep. that someone was going to be able to, to get out. Yeah. There and I don't, want, and I don't want to like out the people that are doing the show and stuff like that too, but there's three of Jamie's, Jamie's athletes doing it as far as pros. I don't know about NPC or anything like that, but I know that, that there's three of us. So I'm, I'm very happy, very, very happy <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because then the following week, the following week is going to be fun because the following week I'm going to do the Southern Muscle, Muscle Showdown. So it's me. And then I have my client, um, Jennifer, doing it. And then I also have an NPC competitor that's competing up in the Northeast as well. That's competing that same weekend. So that's going to be a fun, fun little Saturday for me. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> no, I'm actually, again, I like challenges. So I'm excited about taking that on. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And like I said, Jennifer and I are actually going together. So we're staying together. And so I'll be able to see her like literally night and day as far as getting her dialed in for the show. So I'm excited about that part of it too. So yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, lots of good, lots of good, exciting stuff that weekend. As yeah. a coach, as an athlete, as, you know, yeah. cute. This is the whole thing, the whole thing for you that weekend. Yeah. So that kind of brings us a good little segue into our topic of green flags for, for coaching. So, um, so these we have thought been one of my favorite additions to my yogurt every night. So this is a little bit denser. These are a little bit lighter. So you get more volume with this. You get more density and sweetness with this. Um, I am switching from the spelt puffs to the brown rice now because I'm almost in peak week. So these have no additional um, ingredients or anything like that in there. It's just brown rice. And it just adds a little bit of crunch to my yogurt every night. I have yogurt before I go to bed. So I put this in there. I put 25 grams of this in there last night. Um, it made my macros fit perfectly. And it just, again, gives you a little bit of texture, a little bit of crunch inside of your you know, yogurt or whatever it is. Um, these are actually better because they're sweet, but again, I'm getting close to showtime, so I'm getting rid of anything that's got any additional um, ingredients, things like that. So I'm just cutting these out as of this week and going with just the brown rice puffs, but they're phenomenal. So um, we thought about, you know, one of the things we could talk about is some of the stuff that we do for our clients that maybe other coaches don't do or, you know, things that we find that our clients like. Um, so I'll just start this off with uh, one of the things that I do for my clients is I do a lot of voice notes. So I don't know if you do this or not, but um, inside the Trainerize app, there's an option uh, inside the messenger to, you can type stuff out, you can send pictures, videos, and there's also a voice note in there. So oftentimes, and this depends on the client and it depends on their needs and it depends on, you know, maybe they had a rough week or something like that with their check-in or something like that. Instead of typing out their check-in for that week, I'll actually talk to them in the app. So I'll leave them a voice note because I feel like sometimes just having the voice inflection helps my clients to understand it a little bit better and understand my my tone and understand my tonality. And it, for some people, it just kind of settles their nerves a little bit better. You know, um, I know sometimes text can come off a lot harder than it's meant to be. Um, so when I can, when I can deliver the message correctly with my voice, I think it settles a lot of their brain. So I don't know if there's anything like that, that you do for, for your clients, but I find that helps a lot with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, tonality is everything. And I do mm -hmm. think that's something with online coaching platforms that emotion cannot be translated as well through the internet. Um, mm -hmm. personally, I hate the voice messages. Um, I hate when clients send them to me. I never send them to them. If I feel like that inflection needs to be had, or if somebody had just a really rough check-in, I just pop on a phone call with them. I give yeah. them a call right away. Um, that way we could go back and forth. We can, you know, talk through whatever's going on. And also we eliminate that back and forth of just sending each other things. And it, I would rather just pop on a five or 10 minute phone call. Mm -hmm. um, but I am surprised to hear how many coaches do not do that you know they mm -hmm. tell clients like hey like i never get on phone calls or you can only schedule like this time of day whatever mm -hmm. um you know there's so many times where the client literally told me in their check-in you know they're on the ledge and you know they're having a really really tough time and by the end of that 10 minute phone call they're like thank you so much for calling i feel so much better and we're able yep. to move 
you know, and have a better week. So I take more of the phone call approach, but I do agree with you that, you know, sometimes too, when I'm writing back to a client, I will say, I know you can't hear the tone in my voice right now, but I'm not yeah. angry. I'm not, I'm just yeah. direct, you know, yeah. and, and you, th that you and I coach the same way. We're very black and white. We're direct. And sometimes if people don't understand the inflection, that could be taken a certain way. Um, so that's why communication is everything. And also being yeah. mindful when you're taking that response to be mindful of how you're presenting it and the words that you're saying and choosing to share with that athlete, because as an athlete ourselves, we absorb everything our coach says to us, even from their punctuality. Is it yes. different? Is it the, yeah. So we hyper focus on their response and how they respond. So I do that when Jamie, you know, responds back to me. So I also want to give that back to my clients so that I'm not causing any extra anxiety or if I am, you know, trying to give them tough love and be a little bit more disciplined, I hope that they can feel that as well, you know? So yep. it's, it's all about how you present it. Yep. And uh, just to piggyback on what you said too, the voice note thing, um, it's happened a few times where we've gone back and forth, like my, myself and a client. And that's when I will say, let's just get on the call, Yeah. you know? Um, because I agree with you in that, in that regard, um, I've had that happen several times and listen, let's, let's just talk. So then that way you can kind of knock this out and figure out what the situation is and the solution and all that kind of stuff. And, and that definitely works too. Yeah. Um, and you're right. Everybody's a little bit different because when I'm just communicating normal stuff, um, yeah, voice notes, I love that because I can hear, hear that stuff. But when there's certain, like if there's formulas or if there's like specific instructions or something that I have to follow, type it out for me <laughs> because I need to go back and reference to it. So to, to put an addendum onto that too, that's something I do as well. So like, for example, I had a check-in yesterday for one of my girls that's in prep and I talked it through in the, in the voice note, but then I followed up with her macro changes, her cardio changes, all that kind of stuff in text. Written for so, it, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that way she had both. Um, you know, sent her some links and things of things she needed to get and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, um, so yes. So I do both of those as well. Um, and something that I found that has helped me too, because I I am like we've talked about. I'm very direct when I'm typing. Very very direct. And I read it back sometimes, and I, I'm like, man, I sound like a bitch. <laughs> don't mean to sound like a bitch. So one thing that I found that does help me regardless is I talk into my phone on the notepad, what I want to say out, and then I just copy and paste because then it still has some of my, my vocal, you know, my, my conversational words in it versus me just sitting there and typing. You know, if I'm just talking, I say things differently than I type things. So if I'm, if I'm talking into my phone and it types it out, at least it sounds like me talking. You know what I mean? Like it just comes off a little bit softer than, than when I actually just type. Cause when I just type, type I, when I just type, I'm very direct and I sound bitchy. So I know that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that's just knowing as a coach, you know, your communication style and what works and what doesn't, you know, and yep. when I first coaching, you know, I was very, I remember my best friend in high school, she always used to say, you're such a short texter. Why are you always so angry? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm just busy. And like, yeah, I, so I don't have time across. to write out books and books and sit there type texting. Um, you know, and then when I started coaching, you know, again, I'm just very, you know, to the point, da, da, da. And people would be like, why are you so angry? Or, you know, why are you mad at me? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm just telling you directly what to do. Yeah. It's I had to alter my coaching responses over the years of, you know, the compliment sandwich and making sure I acknowledge and, you know, all of these things so that you can make that warm and fuzzy feeling in that check-in. And now yeah. not only does a client need a warm and fuzzy check-in, you right. know, so needs to be like, Hey, it's been now week three of you not following your macros. What are we doing? What are we doing? You know, right. We're direct response. Um, but as a coach, you got to be very self-aware, you know, and yep. you have to be to grow as a coach yourself to give your consumer your athletes what they need as well right and also on that same topic too clients tell us what you want like there's so many times where just you if you just communicate to us what you need it's going to be a lot easier for us to be your coach i have a client now she's like just so you know she's like i really do need positive reinforcement and i said perfect i can do that not a problem you know what I mean? So whenever I get into a, um, a check-in with her, I always make sure that I give her some some really good feedback about things she's doing well. Because as much as I go through and figure out things that she could be doing better, she needs to know that she's on the right track. She needs to know that she's making positive progress. So I know that in the back of my head. She's like, just so you know, she's like, I really just need that positive. And this is something she told me from the get-go. You know, she's like, I just really need that positive reinforcement, reinforcement, you know, that's just how, that's just how my brain works. 
Um, and I said, cool, I can do that. Not a problem. You know, or if there's something that you want as a client, tell us like, we're your coach and we're going to tell you what we think is going to be best for you, but you need to also communicate with us and let us know what you want. Because if what I want is not what you want, then the two things are not going to match up and we're not going to get you to where you want to be. You know what I mean? So I could think one thing is great for you, but if you don't think it's great for you, then you're going to be upset. Tell us. Yeah. I, no. t- I say that all the time. Like I create what I think is the perfect plan, but the perfect plan isn't perfect if it's not getting met. And That's why right. is it not getting met? And tell me That's that right. so we can alter it. Um, I just had a new client, uh, previous client start back up with me again. And we went through three weeks of check-ins of like, hey, can you switch this workout? So I rebuilt the workouts three weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. Wasn't hitting the macros. And so finally I'm like, let's get on a phone call. So we got on a phone call and I'm like, girl, what's going on? Like, why are we not hitting it? What are the issues? And she gave me a whole list of issues. I'm like, okay, this is something I can work with. And now I can recreate your plan to match all of these issues that are valid and that I can now understand. She just checked in after week one, she's down three pounds and she feels amazing. So it's, you know, it's like I built what I thought was the perfect plan, but she wasn't doing it because she wasn't comfortable with it. So I heard her out. I completely changed the plan based on her valid points. And Mm -hmm. she was completely successful and hit her plan all week last week. Yep. You got to be willing as a coach to pivot that way and hear your client out. That's right. What been, what didn't tell me, she wouldn't have made progress. Or if she told me these things and I bulldozed her and I said, I don't care, keep doing my plan, she's not going to make progress either. So That's right. it's hard too as a coach because we get a little bit egotistical on like, we know yep. this is, this is going to work if you follow it, but it doesn't yep. matter if the client doesn't buy into it. Right. Absolutely. And here's the other thing too on that aspect. Things working. <laughs> We don't need to change it, (laughs) you know? Um, I I have that happen a lot where they think that because we're doing weekly check-ins, there should be changes every week. It's like, no, if you're progressing, you don't need to change anything. If 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 our goal is to drop a pound to a pound and a half and you drop two this week, we're good. We're not making any changes to the plan. We're we're hitting our targets. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. No change is a good thing. That means that you're doing the right things. Your body's doing the right things. You know, we don't need we don't need to change your training every two weeks. More is not more. Correct. Absolutely. More is not more. (laughs) Yeah. I just, so I just had this girl check in this week and it's funny because she checked herself. She's a brand new client, lifestyle client. And, um, I made her join a gym because she's working out at home Mm. and, um, she loves, yeah, she loves the gym environment now. Absolutely loves it because she'd never gone before. She was always just working out at home on the dumbbells and stuff like that. So now that she's going to the gym every day, she loves that environment. So she started doing more than what I told her to, as far as her training is concerned. And she hurt herself. And I was like, uh, I was like, well, the karma, karma checked you real quick. <laughs> I was like, yeah. right, I was you like know, rest, rest days are a thing for a reason. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I have your programming set up for a reason. I'm like, more is not going to help you. You know, more yeah. is not going to help you right now. You know, like just, just stick to what I planned and what I programmed and really just nail those things and progressively get, you know, heavier and things like that with your, with your training and don't add more exercises. <laughs> and it's so difficult too, because right, there's a win in this as well. Right, 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 right. Go to the gym. And yeah. She loves it. She, she loves, loves it. it. Absolutely so loves she it. wants to do more. So that's the big win. But now it's like, okay, well now i got to kind of rope you back in a little yes. bit, you know? <laughs> so, and, yeah. and that's the thing too, you know, uh, uh, what I say, what I would say is an athlete green flag is one that, you know, whatever's on that written plan, that's what you do. There's that's no right. need to do more. Certainly you should that's not right. be doing less. So, you know, it's hard for us as coaches. Uh, we have to control the metabolism, control the body. And if you're doing something outside of, in addition to our lack of the plan, we then don't have control. So yeah, you could have dropped weight this week by doing more or less, but I don't know what worked in order to get us there. So how do I then progress the plan? That's right. Same client I was just telling you guys about, I set her macros and she was like, this is way too much food for me. And I'm like, well, 
well, you haven't even hit your macros. So how do you know it's too much food for you? She yeah. hit the macro two weeks in a row. It was still too much food for her. So I brought it down. But yeah. I don't know that unless you're actually hitting it and know for sure how it's re you know responding to your body. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, the communication part of it, like I have a, a girl too, that um, she has a hard time with, with actual appetite and eating and things like that. I was like, listen, so I knocked her macros down for her. I was like, you know, I, I actually want you eating more, but you're not, you're not. So let's, let's put you into a place where we can at least get you hitting these so that we can build you back up, hopefully get your hunger signals going, things like that. She wanted to quit. I was like, listen, this is not when we quit. You know, this is when we dig in and find out what's going on so that we can get you back to normal. And now like her hunger, hunger signals are starting to starting to fire back up and things. It's all mental for her. She know, her hunger signals are starting to fire. She's starting to eat more. She's feeling better. Like I can see, I can, you again, going back to tonality of, of check-ins, like I can tell in her check-ins that she's feeling mentally better. You know what I mean? So sometimes we just have to work through these, these mental blocks as well. And again, she was open with me and communicated and said she wasn't eating and said, okay, well, listen, we got to figure out what's going on here. You know, and even though I don't want to drop your macros right now, I think that's what we got to do in order to get you into a space where you feel better about it right here. So we can get your body working right. right. Totally. You know what I mean? Totally. So, you know, again, going back to the communication, I would rather you tell me if you don't feel good. I would rather you tell me if you're not able to do this kind of stuff, because then we can work with that. You know, we can figure it out. We can find out where, where, where we are now. That is also in a lifestyle program. If we're in prep, we don't have that kind of luxury in prep. You know, we were just talking about that on the coaching call yesterday. I mean, sometimes you just have to push through. Sometimes you just have to do it. You just have to. And you can communicate and say that you're tired and say that you don't want to do this and da-da-da-da-da. But we got to show. We got to show. We got to push for it, you know? Yeah. I mean, we, honestly, we if you're to. not tired, you're probably not pushing or, or lean enough, you know? So yeah. like that, that is an expectation. And I think that the, the problem is, is that as, as coaches, we care and yeah, absolutely. we empathize when someone tells us that, especially as athletes ourselves, we understand when a client checks in and they're like, my legs are heavy. I'm exhausted. I don't feel good. And you're like, yeah, girl, me too, but mm -hmm. I'm still pushing, you know? So yeah. It's, it's difficult because we don't want to necessarily put on the suffering onto our athlete the way that we suffer because we understand that. But we also have a responsibility to the client. They're signing mm -hmm. up to a bodybuilding show and they want to show up in shape. Well, sorry, I'm dropping your macros this week and you're going to feel tired. Welcome to Pride. That's right. That's right. Um, but it is. It's difficult. And a lot of the times, too, we become friends with our clients. And that's where it's yep. really, really hard where you have to keep that boundary. You're a, you yep. can be a friend with client but when they're checking in with you they're not your friend they're your athlete and That's you right. have to make sure that you are doing what they what you need to do to make sure that they show up and write for that show because that's what they would want to mm -hmm. like you don't want the coach <laughs> to see your athlete on stage and go man I should have pushed them six weeks ago nor do yeah. they want to go back and be like man I wish I would have pushed six weeks ago so just have that conversation now and push and of mm -hmm. course there's a way to say something like it's not like well too bad you're you know tired keep going it's hey I understand where you're at this is normal but we're going to keep pushing. Yeah. Um, and if you don't want to, that's fine. But then this is what this then is going to look like. You're not going to be ready for that show. You're going to be up in what, whatever, but then you just need to continue to paint that realistic picture for the athlete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going back to like, we were, you know, we were talking about that in the coaching call yesterday, you know, I felt really tired after North Americans. We talked about this and everything. And I knew that that was coming from, a place of I knew a period was supposed to be coming and I knew that, you know, I was getting into the prep fields. I was, you know, hitting that one month to three weeks out and that's when it all hits. That's when it all starts to come on you plus the hormonal shifts and stuff too. And I just was not feeling it. And at my check-in, Jamie gave me more cardio and I'm like, you know, I consider Jamie my friend and all that kind of stuff too, but she's also my coach. And at that point in time, she's my coach and she's got to do what's best for me um, as an athlete. So I sucked it up and I did more cardio, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I'm glad I did because now I'm sitting here this week and everything's starting to click. Like I said, my glutes are coming in. I'm dropping a pound a day, basically, you know, those kinds of things. And that all happened because she was hard on me that week, you know? And I always say this to people too. I'm like, I can, I can, I can suffer for a couple of weeks. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's not, it's not a lot at the end of the day. My, we've talked about this, this whole prep series, like, my prep has not been hard. It's not been hard until the last few weeks. Yeah. And that, that you can't, you, like, you can't ask for anything better than that. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I think the anger and emotion of showing up to a show and not being in shape would be greater than you getting that response Absolutely. back six weeks out and going, hey, sorry, suck it up, go do more cardio. Like, oh, fuck. But you're going to go do the extra cardio. That's right. You know, you're going to have your pity party for a few minutes. Then what are you going to do? You're going to go show up and do your cardio. So 100%. you'd rather that temporary, like, fuck, here comes more cardio, here comes that food drop, than showing up out of shape and being like, oh, I should have yeah. done more. I wish you yeah. wouldn't push me more. Yeah. You know, and I've had that conversation with an athlete before where, like, I didn't push her as much because I was feeling in her check-in that I really couldn't. And then mm -hmm. she said to me, like, I wish you would have pushed me more. And then I went back and showed her her messages. And I would, like, put yourself in my position now as a coach and read yeah. this the last six weeks. What would you would have done? <clears throat> and she gave me some feedback. And then I was learning from her athlete perspective maybe where I could have been better. But ultimately, she said, I totally understand where you're coming from and yeah. why you did And I understood where she was coming from. Yep. But have to also think about that too when you're checking in with your coach like if you keep saying like this is tough i can't do this anymore what do you want then us to do we can only right. keep saying hey, we got to keep pushing we got to keep digging for so long until then right. Realize, all right it is what it is like they're they're burnt out we just need to make it to the show at this point absolutely so, not the girl who cried wolf or anything like that nature just make sure that when you're communicating that it's like hey i just want you to let you know i'm feeling fatigued i'm good i know it's normal but i'm just communicating to you that i'm feeling tired or if it's yeah. really like through freaking burnout and understanding what that really means and feels like of course that has to be communicated maybe then we do a refeed or a deload week or whatever that looks like but just really be mindful of how you're communicating to your coach and make sure that you're not embellishing anything because yes. we they do with that information with what you're saying. That's right. Or like, <laughs> this is this made me laugh yesterday because one of my clients checked in. She's like, I really like that high carb day, by the way. I'm like, yeah, well, it's coming down. <laughs> I'm like, you know, like, glad you liked it. it while you had it. <laughs> no, I'm like, because we're not doing it anymore. <laughs> like, you know, and, and, you know, she came back with a couple of questions about how, because I did a, um, carb cycle for her if we could move the days in the carb cycle and I said no I said I have them set up this way specifically for a reason I had them you know put in these two days for a reason and uh and she was like okay got it you know and that's okay she came at me like can we do it because she wanted me to give her more carbs in the days where she had heavier training and things like that and I said no we're not doing it for that reason right now you know what I mean um yeah. doing it for how for how we have you checking in um so as soon as I explained it to her again explaining why we're doing this you know she's like okay got it you know and that's how most athletes are like, yeah. is, they're going to ask for something. But if you say right. no and give them a why, they're like, That's okay, right. yeah, totally cool. Got yep. it. No problem. Yep. Because an ath a true athlete just needs to hear the feedback and why they're doing That's something. Right which That's is also right. a coaching green flag. That's right. I tell my girls all the time when I'm on a plan review call with them, you know, I get them set up, I get, I deliver them their plan. They have time to review it. And then I get on a one hour call with them and we go over that plan front, back, side to side. And I tell them that anything in this plan as we're going through this, if you're questioning why we're doing something, ask. Yeah. Because nothing in here is not put in here with an intent or thought behind it. Right. And I want you to uh -huh. know what that reason is. And right. also too, there are some clients or we where they're just going through something funky. And I do say, hey, I'm throwing spaghetti at a wall right now and I'm looking for something to stick That's because right. we're trying to figure out this issue. Maybe this is going to work for you. Maybe it's not. But I'm communicative of we're going to try this. I don't know what's going to happen, but here's the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Let me know which one begins to happen. Yep. And that way they're like, okay, we're not sure. I don't have this expectation of this is going to happen, but I do have five or six things that I can look for that she's looking for. Yes. But and I think... Yeah, I think this happens with me for with a lot of my clients, especially when they're first starting, is they feel like they need to be perfect right out of the gate. And I'm like, listen, no, this is not about being perfect. There is no perfect here. This is me just figuring you out. So e there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer right now. There's just answers. You know, if you tell me what you're doing, then I can figure out what direction to take you. Correct. Right. Right now, like especially when you're brand new, we have we don't know. We're just going based on what your initial information is that you gave to us. We haven't done anything for you yet. Nope. You need to just do everything as close to the plan as you can. So then, then we can see, okay, your body is responding like X, Y, and Z. Yep. So there's nothing wrong with what you're doing right now. Just had this happen with a new client. Again, she checked in yesterday and her weakness is sugar. She loves like sugar candy and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, initially I told her you can put that in like right after your workout. So that way you still have your sugar and then, you know, it's going right in after your training. 
but that just spirals her into more. And I said, listen, we got to treat this like alcohol and you're an alcoholic. I said, just get rid of it. It's gone. Like for now it's gone, <clears throat> you know, and then we'll figure it out from there. But for now, because it is spiraling you out of control, we need to get rid of it. And again, she was all hard, hard on herself. And I said, listen, no, no, no. I said, you need to tell me these things. I'm glad you told me this is hard for you. That's because then we can fix it. You know, there's nothing wrong with this. You know, we just have to, we just have to work around it and work through it. You yeah. know, there's lots of clients that have, you know, that food for a lot of people, it's nut butter. You yeah. Know, they're like, don't put nut butter in my diet. Like, yeah, I have nut butter. I'm going to over consume. I appreciate that feedback right. and also their willingness to be truthful to themselves. You know, absolutely. Um, a lot of people have issues with a certain type of food and it's, it is just best to remove it because okay. If, the, if the, the urge is there, then just get it out of the house. That way yep. you don't have that, that urge or that, you know, wanting of overeating. Just don't put yeah. yourself in that position. And that goes back to another coaching green flag. It's like, if you tell me that you just overindulged on this stuff, thank you for telling me. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. And, and I think that, that goes helps. back to a coach's response. You know, a lot yes. of the times I think people are like, wow, why'd you do that? Or get angry at the end. And then of course they're, they're not going to want to come back to you again and yeah. be truthful. You yeah. know, like I, anytime an athlete comes to me and they're, they're honest like that. I'm like, thank you so much for being honest and transparent. Yeah. Like, acknowledge that vulnerability because where people go wrong is that they shame them and right. then they're never okay. going to be honest with you again. And you literally just severed that relationship. It takes a yep. while to come back from that. Mm -hmm. So it's all in the coach's response. Like if your athlete's coming to you and being truthful and saying like, Hey, I'm fucked up. Like I'm not on my dot. Like they're coming to you for help. That's yeah. not the time to shame them. That's right. hundred percent, hundred percent. So something else that I started doing just a little fun thing. You, you probably wouldn't do this because you don't like the voice notes, <laughs> Okay, but, but I send group, I send group voice notes to all of my clients and trainer eyes. So, I send group messages. Yeah. Yes. See, I, I send group voice notes. So, okay. um, because again, it kind of makes it more human sometimes, you know, going back to, if we're always just texting, um, it's a little bit, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it's transactional, you know, it's, yeah, like not, it's not a real person not behind personable. it. Yeah. 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 So what I do is when I have like a common theme of all my girls from that check-in that week, like all of them are struggling with something specific. Yes. Um, then I'll send a voice note to all of them talking about that specific thing Correct. and telling them how to work with it, you know, Correct. and the girls love it. They absolutely yeah. love it. So, yeah. And that makes them feel like, which they do have a personal relationship with yeah. us. You know, unfortunately, yeah. the bigger our schedules are the least amount of time that we probably see a, a client in person. That's why I always post where I'm at. You know, I just, I yeah. was in the battle of the bodies last weekend. One of my athletes leave, lives 45 minutes away. She took a drive to do an in-person session with me. Yeah. And that's imperative, you know, to be, it, it's a luxury to be able to mm -hmm. see it and like that, but most of the time we don't see an athlete in person. So yes. them having that personal touch, that personal connection to us is everything that cultivates trust, that cultivates our, our relationships that we can be successful together. The Absolutely. best athletes on my roster are the ones that I've spent so much time with in person because we've created that relationship and that trust factor. Not to say that the ones that I haven't met in person don't have this relationship with me, but you can just sense that different trust mm -hmm. and respect there between both parties. Because Absolutely. then I know that athlete and the way they respond and how they tick and how they train, because I've seen it in person yep. and they for me. Yep. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's, I, I love that thought. So I might yeah. actually see for me for the group messages because I do group messages too. Yeah. Just like you're saying, like, it's so funny how somebody will check in on that week and everybody's dealing with the Everybody. same thing. Like, I just need to send out a group message. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> I do that too with my yeah. athletes as well. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's almost like, you know, how they talk about how girls like sync up with their cycles and things like that. It's kind of the same thing. Totally. <laughs> it's like everybody's struggling with the same thing this week. Let's just get it all out in the open right now. <laughs> yeah. And I told you this, you know, the last couple of weeks, I've had two athletes now in prep that have been tracking their rice incorrectly. Yeah. And I am now understanding this might be something that more athletes are right. doing incorrectly. So I'm actually creating, trying to produce a post about this, but it's, it, it is interesting. You start to see those trends. Usually when one person has the issue, then a second person's reporting and you're like, Whoa, what's going on? Yeah. They're totally syn synced up. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's interesting too, because I think what happens with that is like, 
when when one person has a problem with it, you start noticing that everybody else has a problem with it too. It's like yeah. I can't remember what the what it's called. It's an actual like it's a marketing thing too. It's like once you see one commercial one. for a certain product, you start yes. seeing that product everywhere. It's yeah, kind like of the when same. You start looking for thing. a new car, and then all of a sudden yeah. you're like, oh, that's the car I was looking. Yeah, for. there it is. I just saw that. Everywhere. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, the phenomenon. Like I, yeah. like I see the medium bananas everywhere. Like your story yesterday with your dogs. I see medium bananas it's everywhere. It's not a medium banana. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Ollie. Did you weigh it? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So, but you just start seeing this stuff everywhere when you when you start paying attention to it, right? So, um, you know, sometimes that sometimes just what you say, like I said, when, with the clients, they say in their check ins will trigger something like that. You know, and you start you know, noticing everybody's having that issue, and you can you can really fix it for everybody at the same time. You know, yeah. honestly, so, like content wise, like that's where I get my best reels. Like when yeah. people are you know, with me, I'm like, oh you know, a couple people are having an issue with this. I'm going to make a post about this. You know, that's where I'm listening to my athletes and hopefully producing content that will match with if a couple of my athletes are having this issue, certainly more athletes are having that. Issue. Absolutely. So content wise, this is going to be a really good post. Yep. <laughs> no, I do the exact same thing. I yeah. really do. Like that's where all my posts and my, my stories come from. Absolutely. Because you know, if one person's struggling with it, that means there's gotta be other Multiple people out there struggling water. with it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and oh, and I wanted to, to piggyback back when you're talking about get, seeing people in person too, that's one of the things that I love about the fact, A, we travel to shows all the time so we can see people in person, but B, also the, the events that we do, like the, the CCTS and things like that. I love that weekend because that's my opportunity to see everybody that I work with in person, you know, yeah. at least once and have that personal touch. And you can see that we're like real people with real lives. And, you know, we go through this stuff because sometimes, you know, I, and I find this, I still to this day find this funny because you probably start getting this uh, too with the podcast, but people think that we're, I don't know, like untouchable. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Like because no, they yeah. see a persona. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I was, I like, I was this weekend working in the room and the girls were coming in and out and they're like, God, you're like always working. Like where do yeah. you get cardio in and training in? I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I, I also have a life and I'm human, but most of the time you guys just see, yeah. this, you know, but yeah, they're, it's, it's very difficult. It's extremely difficult, especially, you know, last week, you know, I was, had five girls in peak week. I literally, we did the podcast that morning, woke up to over a hundred messages, yeah. so 200 messages in my trainer eyes account. And I literally wrote a message out to my girls. I'm like, Hey, listen, I'm going to be working very late tonight. I have over yeah. messages in my trainer eyes, like, give me some time. And then midday through someone messages me and they're like, Hey Jay, I just wanted to know what my workouts were to, for tomorrow. And I'm like, I just, I need 20. Just told time. you. I, yeah, yeah. I just needed a little bit more time. You know what I mean? So I yeah. just feel like sometimes they don't realize like how much is ha actually happening. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's hard, you know, and I get it. Everybody's, you know, excited. It's peak week. They want this, they want that right now. But like, I have to focus on today's check-ins before That's I right. deal with what's going on tomorrow, you know? So yep also take care of myself. That's right. Yeah. No, so, I, I'm like, know. I don't know if people, I, I think people, some people notice like my, my habits, like as far as like social media, I'll be on social media first thing in the morning because that's when I'm having my coffee and like getting started with my day. And then I'll be on social media again at night. Cause that's yeah. when I'm, that's what I'm winding down and, and going to bed in between. It's just random. Like, Oh, there's a story. Let me share it real quick. Correct. I'm not reading anything. I'm not paying attention to anything. I'm not on there. I'm like, so Correct. I'm like, if I'm ignoring your message for 12 hours, there's a reason it's because I'm not on social media. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I got, other, totally. I got other shit to do. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Plus, you know, being in peak week and all that kind of fun stuff too, going into, into shows. And you know, that's, that's another aspect of, um, you know, management that's, that I've had to learn differently this year because typically at shows, show day is a big day for me as far as what I do work-wise because it's hair, makeup, get the suits done, all that kind of stuff. Now it's not only that, but it's also peaking people. So yeah. it's like I have to – I actually have to take down the number of clients that I do for like hair, hair makeup, and stuff at shows on that other aspect of it. Yeah. And I'm like – it's 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 a lot. People don't realize like I, – I, this year was probably the least that I've been on social media at shows just because I don't have the time to do it. I don't have the time to post. I don't have the time to, to record Your hands everybody. On. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this is, this is different. This is a new challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> and I want to be there for you, not for the social media audience. You know what I mean? So it's like, I try to get back to that. And then, and then that brings a whole new challenge when you get home, because then you've still got to get back to your normal clients and stuff like that. You can't catch up with the social media that you missed over the weekend. So it's like, 
just adds a whole new a whole new level of challenge. And in, in the back of your head, you're thinking, I need to post about this, but I don't have time, so I have to go do that. <laughs> my daily, my daily mental battle with myself. I know, right? And then it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna get caught up while I'm on the flight to the show, and then there's no Wi-Fi on the flight or something like that. You totally. Know? <laughs> totally. Every travel day, I send a message to my athletes like, hey, I'm at the mercy of Wi-Fi today. Like, Correct. Ho hopefully, but yeah. 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 Totally at the mercy oh. of the plane. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's that's probably a good place to wrap that up. We'll do some fun questions to kind of um, wrap up the podcast for today. Unless there was anything else you wanted to say about coaching green flags, anything that we missed that you wanted to talk about? No. Okay, no. cool. Awesome. Well, let's do some fun, fun, fun photos. Fun. I always want to say fun photos because that just goes together, but some fun questions. I know, right? Um, cause everybody loves these. So we'll do a few. I pulled up, I went and just Googled again. I don't know if you, if you Googled anything. Um, I did not Google anything. <laughs> you're like, nope. Um, is, sorry. Let's see. I had one that I wanted to say and I can't. Oh, okay. This one. If you were given a chance to explore the ocean or space, which one would you choose? Or space? Oh, yeah, space. Either. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Outer space or deep ocean. <sighs> or deep ocean. I think I, I think I would do outer space. Yeah? Yeah. I think that would be like a once in a lifetime. I feel like I could do like a scuba dive and see this some deep ocean and be just as amazed. True. Plus I have a big fear of drowning. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with space. Yeah. I think I would do space as well. I, okay. I, I don't like the ocean. Like I like the ocean up to my knees. <laughs> and anything more than that. I'm like, no, I can't see what's underneath there. No. Well, you also got a weird thing with like aliens and space. So we, we already established <laughs> This is true. This is true. I'm going to, I'm going to teach the aliens. We've already established that aspect of it. So it just, it just makes sense. But then I think about things like that, um, that mission that's out there right now, they're stuck. I know still, when are yeah. they going to get them home? I don't know. I saw a headline. I didn't read the whole article, but I saw a headline where they were saying they were going to be able to vote from space. <laughs> are you freaking kidding me right now? That's yeah. what we're worried about. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, you know, the one thing is, is like, again, going back to that, okay, they're stuck in space, but at least they're still alive. You know what I mean? Versus like, if you get stuck in the ocean, you're just done. Like that, that exploration thing that went down to the Titanic and exploded, you know, you're just, it's just over. You're, you're bye. Yeah. Yeah. They just bye -bye. found that by the way, they saw, they found the, the, I don't remember what it's called the, you know, you know, when the billionaires, they all went down there and then the whole thing imploded on them. They found the actual, like a piece of that of that thing that they went down in and they found it. Interesting. Yeah, Titanic they, exploration has always been interesting to me. I used to date yeah. someone and his dad used to head up the Titanic exploration. They own the like Titanic gym or whatever. Oh, or, wow. Um, museum. But uh, very interesting, like super, super yeah. interesting history behind it. Like when you really do like a deep dive into it, it's yeah. very cool. Super interesting. I do now going back to how well I know my history, but I do, <laughs> I do watch that stuff on the history channel from time to time. <laughs> I love, I love a good documentary for Me sure. Too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Well, Dan, like I said, Dan's really into all that kind of stuff. Anytime, any time that I come downstairs and he's got the TV on, it's either the news, the history channel or football, college football. It's one, it's one of those, not Typical NFL, Dan. but college football, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those. It's one so of like, those. Okay. I guess this is what I'm watching. Yep. Mm -hmm, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when you were a kid, what was your favorite toy, stuffed animal, or childhood memento? Memento. Oh. The only thing that I can think of right now is I was really into Rainbow Bright and What's Strawberry. That? Rainbow Bright and Strawberry. You don't know what Rainbow Bright is and Strawberry Shortcake? I know Strawberry Shortcake. Are you talking about the the dolls that used to like yeah. eat and stuff? Okay. Just making no, sure. No, no, no. They didn't, they didn't eat. Rainbow Bright, she rode a, a unicorn. Like... Rainbow Bright. Oh. Hold on. I'm going to go. You, I think Google if you it. saw this, you would know what this is. Hang on. Probably. <clears throat> I mean, I know strawberry shortcake. <clears throat> so Rainbow Bright was my thing. She was my jam. Um, is that like a Lisa good. Frank? Like it's like a, like a creator? No, that's Rainbow Bright. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I had 
all of her outfits. Like I think every girl my age had rainbow bright bed sheets, and like, <laughs> like that was the that was the the thing. So I had that, and then my favorite toy was the strawberry shortcake tricycle, which I mm. think again I think every girl I probably could I'm gonna Google it right now and see if it comes up because I think every girl my age had that too. I Ooh. did not have that. I had a Barbie bike tricycle. Short. I had wake. one of those uh, motorized Jeeps, though. That was my th- my thing. I was like, beep, beep. Move out of the that way. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. If well, it, if my childhood mementos is very easy. I'm a baby blanket girl. Like, I had an OG baby blanket. That thing went with me everywhere. Oh, okay. yeah. I totally know that trike. Yep. What is that? Strawberries or something on the yeah seat? strawberries. Yep, That's so strawberry cute. shortcake. My dad it's still vintage. has my Barbie nineteen eighties vintage. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> You're vintage. Vintage. My birthday's Friday. I know. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank Happy you. Birthday. I am. I am vintage. I am definitely vintage. What did yeah. you listen? I'm gonna throw your thing right back in your face. Age is an attitude. That's right. Oh, no, no, no. I'm good. Like, a, I know you're it's, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny. So side note on this, we went and saw Kevin Hart, right? So his, um, his whole theme of his show, the name of the show was acting my age. Cause he just turned 45. So like everything that he was talking about had to do with like aches and pains. Like, like it was one joke. Like you just one day and you, this, this hurts and you don't know why and shit like that. Like it was so good. Like it was, that was, because we go see stand-up comedy a lot. So that was probably my favorite show that we've been to. Because it was just so, it was so Kevin Hart, like typical Kevin Hart, but it was very relatable because of my age and where I am in my life right now. So it was just like, yeah, it was it was good. And his the whole takeaway from that was like, he's like, you know, now that I'm at this age, he's like, I realize just how cool it is to be this age. He's like, you know, it's a, it's a luxury and a privilege to be, to be in my 40s. He's like, I can't wait till I get my 50s. I can't wait till I get to my 60s and hopefully my 70s and things like that too. He's like, I really enjoy it. Like, and he was right. Like people always try to be younger. It's like, why? We're like, we're, we're lucky to be where we are. You know, we're lucky to have gotten as far as we have, you know what I mean? I agree. So, the yeah, older I, just, I get right now, the better life gets, 100%. you know? And, and people said that we talked about this when I turned 30, I was freaking out. Everybody's like, you're going to love your thirties. And it's true. Like you're more established, you know who you are. Like you have a really good solid friend group, like, and truly you just know who you are as a person, you know, yep. and, and that confidence in yourself really allows you to live your life very authentically yep. yourself. Where like in your teens to your twenties, you're trying to live for everybody else and very concerned about what everybody else wants you to do. And That's right. Um, very, very freeing. So I couldn't agree yeah. with that more. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was a great show. So that was just a little side tangent. Good. But, I'm glad you guys um, had fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I was like, yeah, I was like, I, I love the fact that I'm, I am who I am as I'm getting older. You know what I mean? So you start realizing Freedom. what's important in life. Yeah. You start realizing Absolutely. what's important in life and what's not, you know? Yeah. So, um, so what was your toy? What was your toy? My answer was the baby blanket. Oh, baby blanket. Okay. I yeah. missed that. <laughs> I was just Googling. I still, I still have a baby blanket. <laughs> you still have it? I don't have my OG one. I had one that I replaced. I had to replace it when I was a teenager. Um, so I still have that one. But yes. Oh, wow. That's still travel funny. with my baby blanket. Yep. That's my thing. So the- you have to use, you know, a, a password on everything, right? So my password is built off of my little brother's, like, stuffed animal that he had when he was a kid like, used to call it. So that's my password. I just changed the number attached to it. But that's there you go. That's easy. That's what it is. What he used to call I'm not gonna say, but that's what, Obviously. He, used to, what he used to call it. I know. What he used to call it, that is my password for everything. Yep. That's <laughs> very random. That's a good password. Then. Yeah, yeah. Nobody would know. Nobody would know. So Nobody. no. Um there's one I have that up. Oh, um if you could instantly master any language, what would it be? Spanish. Same. Same. Needed. Everybody speak. Yeah, everybody speaks Spanish. Everybody needed this. Yeah, I, I wish I wish I would have listened to my dad in high school. I took two years of Spanish. I can't. Re- I didn't retain anything. He's like, you're gonna need yeah. this one day. You're gonna need this one day. Pay yeah. attention. Yeah. Well, he was right. I should have paid yeah. attention. Well, I did take Spanish as well, and my husband is from Spain, so um, there's that. So I know enough conversationally to be able to stay in the conversation. Um, well, that's I'm a not- blessing. Yeah, I'm not great at it. I mean, I can, I can, I can do little bits and pieces. Like a good example is my seamstress. Her mom um, speaks no English, no English at all. So whenever I go to like pick up, you know, suits and things like that, like I have to, I have to talk to her so I can at least get ideas across to her. 
Um, but she starts talking and she's like, hold on. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. <laughs> let me, I'm like, let me get Google Translator. Hang on just a second, please. Just hang on. <laughs> Slowly down. <laughs> She's so cute. Oh she cracks me up and she just keeps talking. Like I understand every word that's coming out of her mouth. I'm like, no. <laughs> that's when you need to go, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, smile yeah. and the nod, yeah. right? I kind of wish that I could spend more time around Dan's family, just like like immersed in it all the time. You know what I mean? Because like when I do get together with them and like when his mom and dad were alive, like they would all be talking in Spanish all the time. So it's like when you're around it, you have to learn it. Like you just get immersed in it. I think that if I was to go and like spend time in Spain or something like that, I think I would learn it pretty quickly. I think I'd be, yeah. I think I'd be okay with it pretty quickly. So I started watching um, Emily in Paris for cardio and uh, same thing. Like she started, you know, getting immersed into, into the French language and things like that. I think that would be Yeah, I need to start scenario. studying that. I'm going to be there in five weeks. So Nice. Nice. Yeah. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> well, like I said, just have this thing on you right here and you'll be all right. Yeah, Everything's right there. All, all kinds of apps. I'm doing all the deep dive um, on YouTube yeah. of like, what apps do I need? What's helpful? Yeah. So I'm already starting on all those. Well, again, I mean, I went to Japan. I know no nothing about J Japanese symbols or anything that like that. You know, just, there's a, there's an app on there where you can just take a picture and it will translate everything that's in that picture. So it would just take the, the, the language and just turn it into English. So wherever you are, just snap a picture. <laughs> you're Perfect. Good. I think that's yes. what I have is the translate one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's one of the Google ones. It's really, it's like with yeah. the phone. Yeah, it's yeah. with the phone. That's what I used the whole time Good I was there. Know. Yeah. Good and then know. I think you can also do that just on, on actual um, photos too. Like you can, okay. you can change the language on the photos that you take, just regular photos. But yeah, that that's very helpful. Very, very I'm helpful. I'm going to need all that, all those yeah. suggestions. <laughs> all right. You got another question? Um, all right. And then last one, because I really got to pee. Sorry, okay. guys. Okay. <laughs> Um, who is your favorite comedian? <laughs> favorite comedian? Well, um, so I have, I do like Kevin Hart. I mean, he's one of my, one of my favorites, um, him. And then I'm of course I'm gonna forget his name, Sebastian. He's a Italian guy. He's actually coming to DC this next weekend. Sebastian something or other is really okay. good too. Um, I really like Taylor. I forget her last name, but she has a bunch of Netflix specials. Um, uh, Sebastian Mont Man Maniscalco, I don't know how to pronounce it. He's an Italian guy, clearly. <laughs> Do you have a photo? Yep. This is him right here. I feel like I know who you're talking about. Oh no, that's not who I was thinking of. Okay. Yeah. So he's really funny. He's got a bunch of- Are you going to see him specials. when he goes, comes to DC? No, no. Okay. It's, it's the same weekend as, as uh, Daytona. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. So I can't, unfortunately. No. Yeah. No, not, not, not going to work, but he's, no. he's hilarious too. Is he on Netflix? Um, yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I also I like, I like Bill. Too. Taylor is on Netflix. I just can't think of her last name, but the, I like Bill, I've Bill Burr all of her as well. Specials. Okay. Yeah. Bill Burr is hilarious. You know, we, we've seen Dave Chappelle. I love Dave, Dave Chappelle as well. Of course. Classic. Yep. yep. Of course. He was in the Kevin Hart um, award special. And I literally okay. said, through, like, where's he been? Like, where's Dave Chappelle yeah. been? He no, he's been, it. he's been touring. Like there's, oh, he's okay. had a few, he's had a few Netflix specials come out. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah the earth for a while um okay. and then uh and then he came back i don't know a couple of years ago and he's back in the scene and doing all these uh these um shows and like touring and all that yeah yeah, yeah. cool so and then we talked about matt rife last time so we like matt rife too he's awesome yeah um I've yeah, so I've got his shows in person though yeah i watched his netflix special he's really good at crowd work he's not so yeah. good at just the regular stand-up stand jokes yeah. So it's like, I, I, I've, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't impressed with his, his special. I've also heard that he takes the phone. So like, if you have your phone, yeah. they'll take it, confiscate yeah. it. Um, and they're like, really like his security team is really mean about oh, it. Really? Yeah, like I've, I had a couple of clients, they spent a pretty dime, I guess, on these tickets. They ended up getting up and leaving because like this, like, I guess she had her phone, so they didn't take it, but you were supposed to keep it um, face it's down on Okay. And she flipped it because she saw on her watch the babysitter had texted her. So okay. she was just making sure everything was okay. And they basically came up and was like, you know, if you do this again, you're going to get thrown. And, like, they were, like, very mean to her. Yeah. Like, 
not uh, like I'm uncomfortable now. And they got up and left. Oh, wow. See, I've been to plenty of shows where they take your phone, but what you have to do, you have to take your watch off and you have to take your phone off and stick it inside of a pouch. And then they lock the pouch until you leave. Once yeah. you leave, they unhook it and you can take everything out. So that was Kevin Hart. Couldn't had all of our phones in there and stuff. So that kind of sucks because you can't take pictures and stuff while you're in there. So like they have a guy in there taking photos. We got, we got pictures, but the, we get so, but you have to pay for the photos, obviously, clearly all that kind of stuff. Um, which I don't also mind sucks. that though as much no. as of like, I'm a mom and if my kid is home and yeah. they have an emergency, like, you yeah. know what I mean? So I guess well, they, they made, they made that joke. Yeah, yeah. They made that joke. Um, Actually, at the Kevin Hart show, his, his uh, host guy made the joke. He's like, "Your kids will be fine for the next two hours or whatever." Like they don't care. Basically, yeah, yeah, is what no. they're saying. Yeah. No, you're not. You're not getting your phone. Period. Yeah. Unless you, unless you leave. If you leave, you'll get your your phone open back up. But they literally make you take off all of your smartwatch, your your phone, everything. And they've done that at every show I've been to here in DC um, because, again, most of them, yeah, they're filming for Netflix. So they don't want it to get out. And what makes me laugh more than anything is that they're. Both, both Kevin Hart and at Dave Chappelle, there was somebody sitting right in front of me who had their phone out. Mm -hmm. Somehow they got through with the phone on them because you have to go through security and everything. So somehow they went through and they had their phone on them and they were able to still take pictures and stuff like that. So I was like, that's just me. That's just rude. Like, I think I'm like, you know what the rule is coming in here. You know, just, just put your phone away for, for a couple hours. Is it really going to kill you? No, it's not. You're going to be fine. Absolutely. Like, let's go back in the day where, where none of us had cell phones. Okay. Exactly. We'll right. That's we'll true. Okay. That's yeah. true. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's a good place to end it. So that way you can go pee and get yourself ready. Cause I'm sure Thank you're, you. tra you're traveling tomorrow, right? I am. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm going to be in touch with you this weekend because I'm excited to see how everything plays out for you. I think you look Thank phenomenal. You. Thank okay, you. Are you are you going with the purple or are you just going to go back to your? I am based on the lineup. Okay. I'm going in the purple. I was kind of okay. seeing who was going to be there. I think I can definitely come out in the purple. So okay. that's, that's awesome. the plan as of right now. If I show up in blue, something. It is what it is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. No, I mean, you make those game, game, both. game calls. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Always bring both. You always want to yes. back up. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, I can't wait. It's going to be great. Thank you, um, Thank you so much. Long time coming. <laughs> yes. It has. I'm, yeah, I'm excited to see your improvements on stage. I really am. I really Thank am. You. Like Thank I told you, you you're, I was like, your your glutes have their own orbit now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> we worked hard on that. I remember one of our first podcasts we were talking about, you know, yeah. the interpretation of them, you know, so it's yeah. cool. It's really cool to see the way we both progress. I'm excited for both of us to kind of finally get our season kicked off. I know it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun, crazy couple of months here. So, yes, um, so guys, so literally you guys are all getting yeah. the front row pass. <laughs> That's right. I was going to say, so you guys pay attention because we've reworked our schedule as far as what we're doing, as far as the, the actual recording of these for the next few weeks. So next week we will have a Wednesday podcast as well. So pay attention to that. Um, put it into your, your calendar for your cardio theater. Um, yes. But other than that, guys, wish Jordan luck in the comments this coming weekend. And uh, we'll see you back here next week on Wednesday. But for Behind the Bikini, episode 56, we're out. Bye, guys.